So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where India has a civil war. Now, this is, I think, officially a series now because I keep doing videos on it, so I might as well make it a series. But we have done France, Germany, and Poland so far. Now we're moving to a different continent and we're going to be doing India. Now, this video isn't going to be very realistic. Usually I like to do these civil war videos based off like elections, but looking at India's elections, I don't think it would exactly work the way I want it to work. So we're just going to be making up a fictional scenario. Of course, ability wise, India is fine. They're not going to break into a civil war anytime soon. So that should be enough like information to know that this video isn't supposed to be realistic but yeah let's go ahead and just kind of jump right into it so if you guys do enjoy this video make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new all the support is greatly appreciated and yeah let's go ahead and start so india the fourth strongest country in the world both military wise and economically the most populated country in the world so this is a very interesting country but what if it were to break into a civil war india is also a very diverse country there's a lot of different groups in it a lot of different languages so four different groups here we're going to have an islamist group we're going to have a pro western group a pro-eastern group and then of course the normal indian government so the pro-eastern group is going to pop up over here in this panhandle area of india and the pro-eastern group refers to like pro-china pro-russia pro-iran so on and so forth and these guys are going to be chilling over here now we have the pro-islamist group which is going to be popping up over here near pakistan we're also going to be spreading them up north a little bit into this area kashmir and yeah i know that technically india goes like this or maybe it doesn't i don't know this is just the map that i use and then finally we have the pro-western group so let's go ahead and get started with this civil war so first off we have the pro-islamist group meeting up with itself and connecting up to make one whole front over here in the west they're also going to focus in in the Kashmir area but this area is heavily fortified and defended by india so uh good luck doing that so instead they're going to focus here down in the south and try to take over this coastal area the pro-easterners are immediately going to go ahead and march down south in order to get to the coast which is you know a pretty valuable area makes sense that you want to go there and eventually they do just that and then now we have the pro-western group in the south pushing up just you know pushing up so immediately the rebellion groups are going to be off to a pretty big start because of course this is going to take the indian government by surprise they also have to fight a three-front war which is not fun but they are going to get some support from some of their allies although some of the allies also are just going to support the rebellion groups really going to start to show some sides of the world but for now india goes ahead and makes its biggest threat the uh pro-islamist group and that's definitely because it's closest to its capital not because of any other reason speaking of that group they've gone ahead and connected up over here cutting off this area of india and hence and it and now they're going to focus in on just pushing in towards the center of india towards the capital this front is very powerful and it has a large backing by pakistan and some middle eastern countries so it would make sense as to why they're able to do this the pro eastern rebellion is also going to adopt a similar strategy of pushing over towards delhi so they make their march along the himalayan mountains in the south we have the pro western group which is on a more kind of take your time and get what you can get kind of approach of course there are a lot more major cities along the indian coast so it's going to take longer to take them but overall they are moving at a slower pace compared to the other two rebellion groups now we finally see the indian government kind of pushing back a little bit especially over here in the west with the islamist group as they push back one of their largest fronts and meet up with their border from here we have them even crossing over and heading over towards pakistan's border but eventually they're going to stop and focus on other areas such as up north here and down south over here we also see a stance against the pro-eastern government over here in the east as they're also able to push back and even take land down here in the south we have a pretty big stalemate breaking out between the pro-western group and the indian government but now let's go ahead and take a look at the world standings in this war so different countries are going to have different opinions about this different countries are also going to support different sides starting off with the pro-eastern side we have china supporting it of course as we know india and china aren't really on the best of terms and even you know india's prime minister is visiting the u.s right now and talking about china so we know these two countries aren't on the best terms and i know BRICS exist but that's purely an economical alliance i know recently it has gotten closer but still india and china are not considered allies in the war so they're considered considered enemies so china is backing the pro-eastern group and not a lot of other countries are backing this group myanmar is but like they have their own problems so it's not like they're going to be joining a war or anything we also have north korea backing this group that's purely just because they're on china but we do see russia backing the central indian government and since russia did that we also have the united states backing the central indian government now this is just because you know if the u.s were to back the westerners then they're going to lose india's support and you know they're not going to be allies anymore but if russia were to back the easterners they're also going to lose india's support so this is purely just for diplomatic reasons like 
they want to support their western and eastern sides but you don't want to lose india very important trade partner very important country to have allied so on and so forth but now uh the pro-western movement is pretty much going to die at this point because of the united states allies is obviously going to back whoever the united states is backing in this case that's india so france and the uk back india and the western correlation is going to start to fall apart now for the islamist group like i said earlier there's going to be a lot of different countries backing this but the main one is of course going to be pakistan no big surprise there even though like it's it's mostly just because india these two don't like each other in case you didn't know some other countries are of course going to support the uh, islamists but i'm not going to mention which countries those are because i don't really know india has good relations with a lot of countries over here some of them not as good as others but i don't really want to take a guess and i don't want to look it up because i don't care enough to do it i already have my plot set for the video so i'm not going to change it right now anyway part of that plot like i said earlier is uh, the western coalition falling apart we have the indian army easily pushing them back and now invading over here in the coastal areas with american russian british and french weapons now flowing into india it's about to get pretty ugly we have russia kind of snapping at china telling them to cut it out but they're just gonna say screw off mind your own business that's gonna create some tension between these two countries but that's a different video that already exists russia versus china go search it up and check it out it exists on this channel fun facts with it is if there is a scenario that exists i've probably done it except for like past stuff i don't really do history that much anyway eastern coalition is dying and so is the western one but interesting event happening pakistan joins the war on the side of the islamic rebels and this is going to be pretty catastrophic for india at first as they are going to be pushed back to the extreme they're going to lose kashmir over to the pakistanis although it'd be very bloody to do so and from here the green group is going to be over and pushing towards india over here we have the eastern rebellion taking advantage of this and pushing back out and even reigniting some of their claims down south we have the complete collapse and surrender of their western rebellion in the south which will allocate some indian troops up to fight off the islamists and the easterners also this video isn't endorsing hate i just realized that this could probably get pretty ugly in the comments so don't be mean in the comments to each other it's a fictional scenario like i said in the beginning anyway now we have the united states and russia threatening pakistan saying leave this war we're gonna leave you and pakistan's like mm, i don't know and then china's like i got your back so you know if they ditch you i got you and pakistan's like okay cool i'm not leaving the war in russia and the usa are like you know what screw you they don't join the war though because uh they, they don't need to india's got this 100 percent. but if china were to join the war then that's a different story we might see the u.s get involved and at that point that's a whole world war three scenario and i've already done like five of those so once again shout out to myself go watch my videos okay so things aren't going pretty for india they have a huge chunk of their northern area over here lost to pakistan and the eastern area doesn't seem to want to die off so india and china are going to make a deal basically saying hey we'll give you this little area over here if you leave us alone and stop supplying pakistan and china's like okay sure so for now troops are going to withdraw from india more specifically the areas that are going to be indian when the treaty is done but they are going to hold on to the area that they're going to get being this so now now it's a one-on-one -on -one with pakistan and we know that india would probably solo pakistan in a 1v1 but they do both have nukes typically i don't like to use nukes in these scenarios and i'm not going to be doing it today but i have done it before it just kind of do it whenever i want to do it kind of thing but yeah now the indians are pushing back against the islamist rebellion aka pakistan and they're doing so with a lot of success without chinese weapons and you know equipment pakistan is struggling and in addition to that they're also not getting anything from russia or the usa who are both partners with pakistan in certain scenarios so yeah they they kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit probably shouldn't have joined this war but we have india completely taking out the rebellion over here and taking back their land over here in this peninsula up north in kashmir they're going to take a little bit of a stance back but pakistan is also heavily defending this area meaning that they're not going to get it back right now however in other news for pakistan they uh they're about to lose their capital as india is now pushing across we have a large area of pakistan falling over here in the south also important to note that this video is in india's favor if you haven't noticed already so if you're from pakistan or someone that is against india just know that this is india's video not yours that's typically how it goes unless you're poland poland got screwed over in their civil war video so with them losing a lot of their land and even their mainland the green team is going to make up a strategy known as push back as hard as you can and hope for the best they start to carry out this plan and it goes well at first and at this point they're hoping for the best unfortunately though the best is not hoping for them as india comes crashing back down and now with uh, pakistan disorganizing their troops and losing a lot of equipment they're going to get ran through pretty easily now don't get me wrong pakistan would definitely not go down this easy but after losing their capital and losing a lot of the rebellion land pakistan is going to agree to a peace deal in which hopefully they survive so let's go ahead and take a look at this video's peace deal all right looking at this peace treaty here we can see that india actually gained well no they didn't gain land but they, they did gain land but they also lost a lot of land it's kind of a neutral peace treaty here for india they did just fight off three rebellion groups in another country but at the same time they didn't lose that much 
if you were to think that were to happen to any other country you would probably think they're going to lose a lot of land but they really didn't now china annexed a little bit of land from india over here including this area and a little strip along here but this is now a puppet state or an autonomous region of china it's kind of complicated but technically it governs itself but it governs itself under the chinese government sort of like hong kong i think it's called like an administrative territory that's kind of what's happening as for india and pakistan pakistan is going to have to give up their kashmir claims over to india and now it's going to be officially recognized by almost everybody some countries are a little picky including pakistan they're probably not going to recognize it i don't blame them if you just lost a piece of land in a piece deal to a country you lost to probably wouldn't be nice to them but yeah uh, china is going to go ahead and get all of their claims in the Kashmir area as well as any other areas along the border so pretty much all major border disputes over here in south asia have been fixed sort of there's probably gonna be even more issues now but anyway that is gonna do it for today's video if you guys did enjoy it make sure to leave a like on it subscribe to this channel leave a comment share the video with literally everybody in the world all 8 billion people and i don't know do, just do stuff. It's very helpful. If you've watched this far, you might have already done enough. But, you know, you can always do more. So, once again, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And, of course, thank you to all the super fans. This includes Patrick Clauser, Yo Moma Moma, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Kylie Speaks Plays, Poland Country Ball, Dimitri, DW Cool Dude, Nevada Garbage Trucks, Yakko, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.